Now that we can add and subtract polynomials, we consider multiplication. We approach this in stages. First, we recall the exponent rule. So if we have expressions of some base to a power, okay, we take products, the same base, we just add the exponents. So x times m times x to the n is equal to x to the m plus n. Now, if I want to multiply polynomials, we approach it in three stages. First stage, we have monomial times monomial. Okay, recall monomials are just going to be single terms. So I have a number times some power of x. So if I take 5x cubed times 3x squared, okay, I'll put the numbers together, multiply, put the powers of x together, multiply. So 5 times 3 is 15. x cubed times x squared is x to the 3 plus 2. So we have 15x to the fifth power. If we have more than one variable, we'll just do a separate multiplication for each variable. So for instance, if I have minus 5r squared x cubed times 2rs squared, okay, first I do the numbers, so minus 5 times 2 is minus 10. r squared times r, okay, r is equal to r the 1, so I have r the 2 plus 1, or r cubed. I take s cubed times s squared, we get s to the 3 plus 2, or s to the 5th. So I want it with minus 10 r cubed s to the 5th. Next stage, monomial times polynomial. So in this case, what I want to do is just to distribute the monomial into each term in the parentheses. So here, this 2x squared goes with 2x squared, 2x squared goes with the minus x, 2x squared goes with the 2, and then we add everything together. So for our first term, 2 times 2 is 4. We add the exponents to get x to the fourth. Second term, I have a minus 2. This x is really x to the 1. We add the exponents. I get x cubed. Then the last term, 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4x squared. So we have 4x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared. Next step, polynomial times polynomial. So here, we'll take our first polynomial and then break it up into monomial times polynomials. So what we do here, first I'll take the 2x squared, multiply it by our second term, add that to 3x times our second term as so. Now we just apply our monomial times polynomial rule. So we've worked this one out already. For this one, 3x goes with 2x squared. Okay, we have x to the 1 here, so I have 6x to the 1 plus 2, or x cubed. 3x goes with minus x, so I have a minus 3x to the 1 plus 1, or x squared. Then I have a 3x times 2, which is going to give me a 6x. Now, here we just use our addition rule putting all the like exponents together. So 4x to the fourth power is by itself. Minus 2x cubed goes with 6x cubed to give me a 4x cubed. 4x squared goes with minus 3x squared to give me an x squared. And then the 6x is by itself, and we get our answer. In practice, we'll have a better way to do the bookkeeping. So let's redo the previous example. We put the longer polynomial on top. For the shorter polynomial, we go through term by term. Okay, For each term, we'll just do monomial times polynomial. Now, 3x, Okay, we're going to get a 6x minus 3x squared, 6x cubed. Then when I do the 2x squared, I want to keep things organized by column. So we put like exponents in the same column. So 2x squared times 2 gives me 4x squared, so I put it in the x squared column. 2x squared times minus x gives me minus 2x cubed, goes in the x cubed column. 2x squared times itself gives me 4x to the 4, goes in the x4 column. Then we just add down each column. So you'll notice the answer agrees with what we had in the previous board. So same work, just better organization. Now, one thing to be careful with, okay, we want to mind the gaps when we're missing exponents. So this is just keeping our organization straight. So let's try minus x cubed plus x plus 1 times x squared plus 2. Put the longer polynomial on top. So we'll have minus x cubed. There's 0x squared plus x plus 1. So we have a gap here. Not so important to put a gap in for the x in the x squared plus 2. But we could do that also. Now, I go through term by term in the shorter polynomial. So we'll have 2 times first polynomial. So we'll have a 2 
2x minus 2x cubed, and I put space in here for the x squared. So it's going to keep room for an x squared column. For the x squared, go through term by term. We start with an x squared, so I put that in the x squared column where we've given room. Then I'll have an x cubed, goes in the x cubed column. There's no x to the fourth, so we have a space, and then I'll have minus x to the fifth. I add down each column. Okay, what comes out? Minus x to the fifth, minus x cubed, plus x squared, plus 2x, plus 2. And we see that our addition is nice because we've made things organized. In general, multiplying polynomials takes some practice. When we have a product of binomials, okay, so we have two terms in each factor, we have special rules. So these are the types of things you want to put on a note card and memorize. First, we have FOIL. And now FOIL, okay, there's nothing to show here. This is just the distributive property that we used in the previous board. What FOIL is, it's a good organizational technique, so you're not thinking about what you need to multiply when you do a product of binomials. Now, FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. So for instance, if I took 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 4, if I were to apply FOIL, I don't have to think about how I multiply. So I go first, so 2x times 3x. Outside, I go 2x minus 4. Inside, I go 1 and 3x. And then last, I have 1 and minus 4. So I take all those products, and then I sum. Okay, this gets us to the same exact answer as to what we would get from the previous board. Now when I work that out, we collapse the terms of the x, and I get 6x squared minus 5x minus 4. We can apply FOIL to get the special rule for a difference of two squares. Now what this means, if I take a plus b times a minus b, that's equal to a squared minus b squared. So you'll note with FOIL we expect four terms. Here we're only going to get two. So there's something special here. Now if I apply FOIL to this product, okay, what do we have? First is a times a, so a squared. Outside is a times minus b, so minus ab. Inside is b times a, or ab. Then last is b times minus b, or minus b squared. When we sum, the minus ab and the ab go away, leaving me with a squared minus b squared. Now, let's apply this to a few products. So if I take x plus 1 times x minus 1, okay, here I note I have the minus in the middle here, so I can take a equal to x, b equal to 1. So we'll get x squared minus 1 squared, which is 1. Sometimes when we use difference of two squares, we have to rearrange our terms a little bit. So for instance, if I took 2 plus x times x minus 2, okay, note these aren't in the order that I want, so I could just switch them. I get x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now I have a equal to x, b equal to 2, we're going to have x squared minus 2 squared, or x squared minus 4. We can apply difference of two squares to terms that are somewhat complicated. So for instance, if I were to take 2x plus 3y times 2x minus 3y, okay, here I identify a as 2x, I identify b as 3y, and then we just apply our rule. So I'll have 2x in parentheses squared minus 3y in parentheses squared, and then I could just do the work from there. So I'll have 4x squared minus 9y squared. For our final rule, we have perfect squares. This states, if I take a plus b quantity squared, it's equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If I replace b with a minus b, we'll have a minus b quantity squared equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Now, note, this is not giving us the equation a plus b quantity squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So there's a tendency to want to use that rule because it looks like a difference of two squares, but it's not true. Okay, one thing to note, when we FOIL, in general, we get four terms. When we do perfect squares, we get three terms in general. The only way we get two terms is when we have a difference of two squares. Now. We could check this directly. So let's try a plus b quantity squared 
with a equal to 1, b equal to 2. Okay, what do you know? Well, if I take 1 plus 2 quantity squared, that's 3 squared, which is 9. If I take a squared plus b squared, I okay, have 1 squared plus 2 squared, it's going to give me 1 plus 4, which is equal to 5. 5 is not equal to 9. Now note, if we use a rule, what do I have? So a is 1, b is 2. So I'm going to have 1 plus 2 times 1 times b, which is 4, plus 2 squared, which is 4. So I have 4 plus 4 plus 1 gives me 9, which agrees with what we have here. Now, let's check our formula using FOIL. So if I take a plus b quantity squared, okay, I have a plus b times a plus b. First is going to be a squared. Outside, it's going to be a times b. Inside, it's going to be b times a. Last, it's going to be b squared. Then I can combine the ab with the ba to get a 2ab. We have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, confirming my formula. Now, some examples. Let's try x plus 1 squared. So we could just FOIL or use the formula. If I use the formula, a is equal to x, b is equal to 1. So I'll have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So I have x squared plus 2 times x times 1 plus 1 squared, or x squared plus 2x plus 1. If I use x minus 1, okay, we use the second formula. I'll have, okay, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So I'll have x squared minus 2x1 plus 1 squared, or x squared minus 2x plus 1. Final example, okay, we can use complicated terms. Okay, the idea is just to do your bookkeeping correctly. Take 3x plus 2y quantity squared. Okay, I can write that out. Here I note a is equal to 3x, b is equal to 2y. Now I just put it in the formula. So I have 3x quantity squared plus 2 times ab, or 3x times 2y, plus b squared or 2y squared. Then I work out each term. So I have 9x squared plus 12xy plus 4 times y squared. If we use the minus, okay, you'll note, it'll be the same answer except we change the plus in the middle to a minus. So that's just going to change this minus here. So we get a minus 12xy in the middle. 